Well, good morning, everybody. Feels like a room full of friends, and it is. I think I've met most of you over the course of the last 18 months, and it's been what a, what a great time. But thanks again for spending your time with us this morning, and we have a lot to, uh, to share. You know, last January, as President Guzman alludes to, um, this meeting was had a little bit different tone. We found ourselves in an epic struggle with congestion, severe congestion, and gridlock. What I want to do is take a moment to reflect on 2015 and what was a very painful and public meltdown of our supply chain, along with the extraordinary turnaround and recovery that followed. So if you don't mind, let's take a look at this video. What has created this perfect storm? Why so much congestion? So we're seeing ripple effects across the U.S. economy. Automakers are taking a hit. Uh, we just heard from Honda saying that they are cutting U.S. output because they simply can't get auto, the auto parts they need. In Long Beach, one in eight jobs are associated with the port. What sort of impact is this having on the jobs picture? If the issues are only minor, why does this seem like a colossal problem? How soon could we see the issue resolved? So. How frustrated are you? How important are these ports to the U.S. economy, and are we seeing it show up elsewhere? The impact since, in the last six months, the impact has been over a trillion dollars. Well, we'll see some numbers this, uh, this month that might uh, be pretty enlightening. Typically, we have this big peak in the fall for holiday goods and so forth. It's been strong and steady uh, since March. Well, I know it's a cliche, but what a difference a year can make. The video we just saw did a great job of summing up our extraordinary journey together over the past year at the Port of Long Beach. All of you, make no mistake, all of you, made this turnaround possible through extraordinarily hard work and new approaches to communicating and collaborating, along with innovative solutions and a fierce determination to regain our momentum and rebuild the trust of our stakeholders and customers. Terminal operators, longshore workers, truckers, ocean carriers, railroads, beneficial cargo owners, brokers and freight forwarders, contractors, and many others worked tirelessly throughout 2015 at the Port of Long Beach to achieve something for the record books. So please give yourselves a big round of applause for making this past year an amazing display of teamwork and turnaround success. And speaking of teamwork, I want to acknowledge some other folks that have made this day and the entire past year possible. First, thanks to all the wonderful wait staff and others that put together this excellent breakfast. Give them applause. I also want to acknowledge our mayor, Mayor Garcia, and our elected officials and harbor commissioners who helped navigate the port through some very difficult, uncharted waters, making key decisions at critical moments to keep our momentum going and have the kind of year we had. I personally want to thank our harbor commissioners for the countless hours generously given to our port. We have relied on your guidance, your advice, strategic direction, and effective governance of the port operations Please give, give all of our leaders another warm round of applause. I also want to really comment on the people behind the scenes that make this thing happen every day. I want you to know how proud I am 
of our port employees, a team which works tirelessly to support our customers and our stakeholders as we build a complex here in the port that is second to none. It is a true privilege for me to work with this team, a group of people as responsive, innovative, and collaborative, and a team that has proven, proven itself under pressure throughout the entire year. A remarkable group. The past year, we ran like mad to keep up with ever-changing conditions in the marketplace. And as we expanded the port's capabilities, we recruited and promoted the best and the brightest to ensure our ability to compete globally. This includes quadrupling the number of women we have in director-level positions and above in the port. I agree. Our senior management team is now in place, and they fully reflect the diversity of the workforce they lead. Please join me in congratulating again the Port of Long Beach employees for their outstanding achievements this past year. So I stand here today a little bit different circumstances than a year ago. Thanks to everyone here, the Port of Long Beach just delivered its biggest year since 2007. <laughs> taking us back to 2007 pre-recession levels of volume. Our port handled about 7.2 million TEUs which is only the third time in our 105-year history that we've exceeded 7 million TEUs. Through December, our year-over-year -year volume growth was 5.4 percent, nearly double that of the U.S. economy in 2015. During July and August, Long Beach achieved record cargo numbers, resulting in the port's biggest quarter in its entire history, more than 2 million TEUs moved through the port in the third quarter alone. Although we saw record volumes through our peak season, we experienced no chronic congestion problems. We had a remarkable achievement in comparing it to the same time last year. In fact, trucking queues from its height dropped about by a third, while rail fluidity and velocity reached record levels of performance. And perhaps most satisfying was the fact that in the back half of the year, we began gaining market share after losing market share for four years in a row. At the same time, the media, who were quite critical of us, began retracting their obituaries of Long Beach as our performance continued to accelerate and the East Coast began reversing their earlier gains. So how and why did this happen? Well, let's start with the how. First, the agreement reached last February between the ILWU and the PMA, which was helped along by Labor Secretary Tom Perez, opened the door for rapid recovery of our congested terminals. While we were predicting it would take three months for us to fully recover, actually, operations took half the time, just six weeks to clear the backlog of ships at anchor and begin to approach pre-congestion levels of throughput and system fluidity. Terminal operations and longshore labor delivered extraordinarily high levels of productivity with record-setting gains throughout the entire year. It only took months, not years, for our terminals to regain their status as the most productive container terminals in the world, based on the Journal of Commerce's own reported container vessel moves. As the labor negotiations were going on, we had already been working for several months with the three primary chassis providers, DCLI, FlexiVan, and track. We worked with them to create an interoperable chassis 
pool of pools. This was a joint effort with the uh, Port of Los Angeles. And in March, the pool of pools was launched with an immediate positive impact on operations. And the work continues every day to continually improve that. At the same time this was going on, Long Beach engaged a sweeping new initiative called Supply Chain Optimization. We call it SCO for short. Los Angeles agreed to participate in a joint port effort, and, and together we sought and received authority from the Federal Maritime Commission to launch our SCO initiative. Last April, Gene Soroka and I conducted our first SCO meetings with stakeholder, stakeholders throughout the supply chain, many of whom are actually represented right here in this room today. I want to thank the FMC. I want to thank the Port of Los Angeles. And I want to thank all of our stakeholders for being such incredible partners in this SCO initiative. Thank you. Our SCO mission is daunting. We're working to create a marine supply chain that provides end-to-end -end visibility of containerized cargo moves from origin to destination. We are beginning to optimize efficiency, minimize costs, and continually improve the speed to market of goods moving through our port complex. We're doing this by employing advanced technologies, processes, and metrics. Since last April, the port staff has facilitated nearly 50 standing room only meetings and conference calls with our stakeholders. We are addressing peak operations, chassis availability, terminal optimization, rail capacity, trucking operations, data management and integration, as well as other key performance indicators. And we're excited about this because we're going to continue this even more aggressively in 2016. I know all of this is a mouthful, but honestly, this is exactly what we have to do to fulfill our mission. The committed involvement of our stakeholders in the SEO process has been nothing short of inspirational. While we were engaging SEO, our Long Beach team also initiated an aggressive outreach program to directly address the concerns of our beneficial cargo owners and win back their business and their confidence. During the year, our commercial operations team and I traveled the globe along with some of our board members. We spoke with more than 300 BCOs, ocean carriers, and trade associations, explaining what went wrong, how we were fixing things, and encouraging their participation in SEO gatherings. As a result, many of these stakeholders met face to face for the very first time. Clearly, it was a tough sell to win back the BCO business, and we're still working on it. We need to regain the full trust of the shipping community after what happened a year ago. Nevertheless, as the port demonstrated its ability to rebound and change from the congestion crisis, and with our stakeholders actively engaged in our SEO initiatives, we began to see the volumes start to rebound. And as you can see from this chart, the gains were strong and steady. So that, in part, answers how we turn things around. But perhaps a bigger question is, why did the volume rebound so quickly and to record levels? That answer lies in understanding the compelling nature of the port's value proposition. Long Beach offers the shortest, fastest, and most cost-effective gateway for movement of seaborne goods from Asia to America's entire major consumer marketplace. Our deep water marine terminals handle the world's largest ships, employ the greenest 
and most productive technologies available, and speed goods to market through North America's most extensive intermodal transportation infrastructure. Simply put, the cost of diverting Trans-Pacific container volume to the East Coast or Gulf ports, either through the Suez or Panama Canal, adds to total transportation costs and increases transit time to market by 20 to 40 percent. And as we all know, time is money. Cargo diversion to the East Coast last year costs our BCO partners millions of dollars per day. And they returned to Long Beach as soon as they felt confident that operations were back to normal. In my view, so long as we protect our value proposition and enhance our business operations, we have little to fear from other ports or the Panama Canal stealing our jobs based on the cargo that drives economic growth. Not to mention that over half the container vessels currently on order will not fit through the new expanded Panama Canal. They are going to be coming here. So our collective efforts to prepare the port complex for the mega ships beginning to call here is starting to pay off. For example, in just a few weeks, CMA CGM's new 18,000 TU container vessel, the Benjamin Franklin, will call Long Beach. This megaship, which is the largest to call North America, will berth at our own Pacific Container Terminal. So just what does mega mean? Let's take a look at this. Well, that's a lot of shoes, I got to say. I know my wife is happy about this. And the exciting part is we get to host CMA CGM's christening of the Benjamin Franklin while the ship is in port on February 19th. Another major milestone for the Port of Long Beach. I also want to mention our commitment to security. As the world becomes increasingly subject to physical and cyber threats, it creates an urgent need and vigilance for all of us to protect the people in our care and the infrastructure assets that we're responsible for. The port has invested hundreds of millions of dollars to fulfill this mission, and we will continue to do so. Our security team and our joint command and control center that we share with our various city, state, and federal agency partners stands as a strong reminder of our commitment to protecting the port and its people. Please join me in thanking our men and women in uniform for their service and bravery. Our virtual port system is a modern marvel of surveillance, interdiction, and interagency communications technology. As well, the first of two new fireboats recently arrived and is currently being commissioned. And it's a big boat. I know the, my friends in the fire department are excited about this. These assets directly support our readiness for the mega ships arriving this year at our port. So where do we go from here? In considering the future, we can look to the past for inspiration. The Port of Long Beach has a long legacy 
of leadership and board governance, which has effectively anticipated future events, which were translated into market strategies and capital investments. Just within the last 10 years or so, the port established the landmark green port and energy policies and authorized the spending of billions of dollars for advanced technologies, terminal redevelopment, expanded rail capacity, a new bridge, upgraded road infrastructure, and the list goes on and on. But with everything we do, we carefully balance the needs for growth with our obligation to environmental sustainability. This sets Long Beach apart from everyone else in our industry as we seek to inspire others to follow our same path. Today, our board and leadership team are working together to take Long Beach to the next level. We are currently developing our new long-range strategic plan based on our recently updated cargo forecast, which is quite an exciting forecast, and our land use study, and a wide range of other competitive and macroeconomic data. This includes understanding the shifts in global economics, manufacturing, and related trade patterns, particularly within Asia and Latin America. Also, what impact, if any, will the widened Panama Canal have on our business? And of course, we're carefully studying the mergers and acquisitions that all of us are so keenly aware taking place among several ocean carriers while assessing the impacts of known and potential changes to the various vessel sharing alliances. As part of this process, we're evaluating the next wave of investments in energy and environmental technologies, advanced terminal infrastructure, and systems which enhance security and information management. Our new strategic planning process is based on a rolling 10-year model, which delivers an annual business plan with quarterly board reviews. Given the highly dynamic nature of the business we're all in, our, our ability to assess plans on a quarterly basis and make adjust, adjustments as needed is absolutely vital to staying agile. Currently, we are in the middle of executing our 2016 business plan, including the 10-year, $4 billion capital improvement program where we're developing Middle Harbor, replacing the Gerald Desmond Bridge, and doubling the capacity of our on-dock rail system, along with several other dozen small to large capital infrastructure projects. So I want to share with you now a short video of our progress.
As you saw, one of our major infrastructure projects is a billion dollar expansion of our on-dock rail system, driving capacity increases throughout our port complex. During the past year, we increased on-dock rail capacity from 23 to nearly 30 percent, with our goal of increasing capacity to 50 percent within the next 10 years. Of course, I'm pushing for sooner than that. On-dock rail, make no mistake, is a key investment for us and a critical environmental initiative for reducing truck congestion and related air pollution. Every train that we move off the port eliminates between 750 and 1,000 truck trips, which not only relieves truck congestion on our port and on our adjacent road structures, but it also significantly increases air quality. As well, the $1.5 billion Gerald Desmond Bridge replacement project is moving forward rapidly, achieving visible milestones on what seems like a daily basis. The two main towers are beginning to rise out of the ground, currently at about 80 feet high, on their way to their maximum 515-foot height. When done, this iconic bridge will be the tallest structure on the Long Beach skyline. And with variable LED lighting, it will be visible for miles in all directions. And with the bridge rising 205 feet above the water below, not only will it allow the megaships to pass underneath, but it'll be a major draw for pedestrian traffic and cyclists using the bridge's special lanes for, for people and for bikes to get breathtaking views for everything for miles around. The new bridge is on schedule to start handling three lanes of westbound traffic by the end of next year, with both east and westbound lanes open for traffic by the end of 2018. The new bridge will better handle the 15% of America's cargo volume that rolls across it. Now let's turn to Middle Harbor. This $1.3 billion redevelopment project reached a key milestone last October when we released phase one to Long Beach Container Terminal for operational testing. Middle Harbor is the world's first all-electric Zero Emission Automated Mega Terminal. I'd like you to take a look. And this is happening now. Let's take a closer look. How cool is that? That is one big electric car. LBCT expects to complete all systems and operational testing, as well as workforce training, in time to launch full commercial operations in the second quarter of this year. Phase one will add about 10% more container capacity to the Port of Long Beach and provide LBCT with the capability of handling up to 18,000 TEU vessels. When phase two comes online in 2019, Middle Harbor will add another 10% capacity to the port with the capability to handle, and get this, up to 24,000 TU vessels. When fully operational, LBCT will have the capacity
to handle at least 3.3 million TEUs per year, making this terminal by itself one of America's, actually North America's, largest ports. Just a phenomenal project. I spoke earlier about the port's legacy of leadership and governance, which guides and inspires our port today. This legacy drives our commitment to the community of Long Beach, as well as the surrounding region throughout the Southland, from both an economic and environmental sustainability perspective. We feel so fortunate to be part of a city with such strong leadership, starting with Mayor Garcia and our wonderful city council, and extending to local, state, and federal representatives, many here today, who understand and are committed to the su success of our port. I want to join you in thanking all of our elected officials once more. And as President Guzman mentioned, I also thank the Long Beach Civic Center Project, which we're so proud to be part of, will be the ultimate demonstration of community and harmony. When completed in 2019, the City Hall and the Port Headquarters will stand side by side as a permanent reminder of the inseparable link between the city and its port. Not to mention it's going to be great to be back downtown overlooking the harbor where we belong. Not only does the port represent a major economic engine for Long Beach and Southern California, it also represents a driving force behind continuous improvements in air and water quality. As we have steadily grown our business in the recent years, we have dramatically reduced harmful pollutants. As you can see from this chart, we have greatly reduced air emissions across the board, the most significant health-related risk being diesel particulate matter, which we've reduced over 85 percent. I agree. In fact, we've already achieved our emissions reduction targets based on the state's 2023 attainment goals. So now we're focused on achieving the state's 2050, 2050 emission reduction goals. So here's how we're approaching it. First, we're working with our partners at the Port of Los Angeles on our joint Clean Air Action Plan, or CAP, for short. This will be the third phase of CAP and will focus on the next generation of technologies needed to achieve our goal of a zero emission port operation. CAP will have a direct tie-in to our SEO initiative because quite frankly every step we take in improving operational efficiency directly improves air quality. In Long Beach, we are well ahead of the game with projects like Middle Harbor, On Dock Rail, as well as our technology advancement program, which we call TAP, and the related ETAP program, which puts energy on the front of that, which is focused, obviously, on clean energy technologies. One recent TAP success story was our investment in the Amex project, which was developed right here in Long Beach. Amex stands for Advanced Maritime Emissions Control System and is used as an alternative to ship-to-shore electrical plug-in power, which we call, obviously, cold ironing. Amex was recently approved by the California Air Resources Board as a certified alternative to cold ironing, which now allows ships not equipped with shore power to achieve cold ironing compliance. As well, our energy island concept, which we introduced here last year, 
envisions transforming our port into an integrated network of microgrids, generating clean, sustainable power and water throughout the port and for essential city operations. Energy Island has the potential to deliver major environmental benefits, long-term stable energy costs, and operational resiliency against unplanned or catastrophic grid outages. Energy Island is well into the research and planning phase, and our stakeholder advisory board, which includes all the major environmental uh, organizations and providers of energy, is working with us to define the scope and viability of this concept and bring this before the board for discussion as a recommendation this year. While TAP focuses on mitigating mobile sources of pollution like, obviously, ships, trucks, and trains, ETAP will focus on evaluating advanced technologies for renewable power generation, lighting, energy storage, and everything else related to the air quality and water quality of our port. ETAP will play a significant role in our business as we pursue CAP and future projects like Energy Island. And we'll also focus on developing the next generation of fuels for ships, trucks, trains, and the port of the future. Take a look. A worldwide leader. The most productive and skilled workforce anywhere in the world. Economic engine, green, and people power. Cleaner trucks, fewer truck trips, cleaner rail. The fastest turn times anywhere in the world. A place where everyone wins. The Port of the Future is a port that invests in technology, in green innovation, and respects the communities that surround it. But most importantly, the Port of the Future is a port that always thinks about the people that work there and the people in the neighborhoods around the port. The Port of the Future will be exemplified by cleaner technology, high-wage specialized labor, and greater efficiency. These elements will keep ports competitive for years to come. We're going to be moving cargo faster, more efficiently, and with higher velocity than ever before. The Port of the Future integrates economic and environmental objectives so everyone is a winner. This is a winning combination that will make the Port of Long Beach truly the Port of the Future. But most importantly, the Port of the Future, no matter how much is invested in innovation, is always centered around the people of the port, the people that work there and the people it serves. How great was that? Elizabeth, wherever you are, Bobby, Mayor Garcia, of course, and Secretary Kelly, thank you so much for taking a moment to share those thoughts and those challenges with us. This is exactly what the Port of the Future is about. So what we're building today is a model that represents the Port of the Future. Through collaboration with our customers and our stakeholders, all represented here, we are developing and deploying the cleanest technology available anywhere. The way we ultimately pay for these environmental technologies will be through continuous efficiency and productivity improvements that increase the speed and reliability of goods movement through our port complex. We firmly believe that economic and, envi and environmental sustainability are two sides of the same coin. And doing right things right preserves both capital and protects lives. We are already leading out on most critical demonstrations of the Port of the Future. Our CAP initiative, supply chain optimization, Middle Harbor, Energy Island, on-dock rail expansion. They're all down payments on the next generation of policies, processes, technologies, and capital investments that will propel us towards our vision of a carbon neutral, zero emission future, resulting in the greenest, most efficient, and reliable seaport anywhere in the world.
You know, in the final analysis, it boils down to three things. Vision, courage, and leadership. And all of these attributes are extremely well represented in this room. It was a vision of those before us that got us here. We now need the courage to think in new ways and make bold decisions that fly in the face of convention. We will need the leadership to challenge and inspire others to dramatically improve the way this industry does business. Together, all of us have the opportunity to transform the port of Long Beach from merely a world-class port to the world's best port. I couldn't be more excited about our future, our future together, or to be more proud to be part of this extraordinary port community. Welcome to the Port of the Future, and thank you very, very much.